his stream. And so what made me really want to do this financial stream was I was reading the comments yesterday and thank you all for commenting on yesterday's stream because I learned a lot from it. And when people, you know, talk shit, I just, I just, I kick them out now. And I, a lot of people have told me the chat is much more enjoyable now that I've become border patrol with ice. I'm like, no, you're not, you're not welcome here. Get the hell out of here. And, uh, this one guy wrote to me, you don't really have an IQ. This is why I brought up the IQ thing. You don't really have an IQ of 147. I'll PayPal you $1,000 right now to take a test. And normally when someone says like, you know, I want to see you take a test. There's no chance. Like that's demeaning. That's a waste of my time. I don't feel any need to do that. I don't have to prove anything. But $1,000 is $1,000. That's right around the range of money where I'm listening. So I wrote to him and I, I was dead. So I'm like, if you PayPal me $1,000, I will live stream an IQ test. And then I started thinking in my head about rules. Cause like I've been taking the test in a couple of decades. So maybe it's dropped. I've done some drinking in my life, probably no more than 10 points. It could be higher, it could be lower, but if it's 140, you have to apologize in written form to the world. <laughs> but either way, I'm keeping the thousand. And then I started thinking I shouldn't take this guy's thousand because this is a horrible financial decision. Like he, but then I, I also can't stand the guy clearly because he's being a total piece of shit. So I'm like, no, I'm going to take his thousand. He never would do it anyway. There's no way he'd write back because I would absolutely live stream that because I'm a little curious myself. But like to think I'm lying about that is insane. You know, the best IQ is 130. You're smart as fuck, but you're not crazy. It's the same with height. The best heights for a man is between 5'11 and 6'3". 6'7 is way too tall. It's like, I'm not bragging about my IQ. The, the best IQ is 130. Because you're crazy smart, but you're not seeing patterns in like raindrops and shit. So anyway, I started thinking like, why the hell would this guy potentially give up $1,000 out of spite and envy? Because I've had people, and I've done this before too. Like uh, when I, my first big check from Sony was big, you know, like a half a million dollars when I was like 25. And so my buddy who used to book the improv and would help me get spots uh, had this like dead end job. And I was like, hey man, do you want to help me for a year? And I, I just paid him $50,000. I'm like, like, cause I, because that's how I roll. And I don't regret it for, uh, at all. Even though now he's in fucking, he's a, 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 a rich Jew from a rich family. Now he's in Black Lives Matter. That's awesome. But I don't regret it at all because it's like, that's how you build communities. It's like, I wouldn't have been able to be seen by Sony if he hadn't given me spots at the improv. And, you know, I trust him. And what's money when you have that amount of money, like we could make something awesome, you know? And like, I've gotten a thousand bucks before, like this one, I can even say the company. I thought about not saying the company, but there's so many employees that I'm not ratting anybody out or something. It just makes the story a little funnier. Like a Google executive once PayPal me a thousand bucks because he's so, he's just making bank and just felt just miserable, like that he couldn't speak up at Google and just loved that I was at the the tip of the spear and, and knew I would put it towards good, something good. And I did, you know, make more comedy with it. You know, I don't have to be sponsor. I can talk shit about Jews and no one can kick me out. Um, like that makes total sense. It's not about like giving someone a thousand bucks. It's why are you doing it? And this guy was, was saying that he was so convinced that I was lying. That's the problem with stupid people. It's a real catch 22 sometimes because they're too dumb to know it's not a brag. So you can't possibly explain it to them and then they just spiral. So I'm like, why would you drop a thousand dollars on, on spite? And I would prove them wrong. The lowest it is, is 140 at this point, And that's from a good amount of drinking. But like, that would humiliate me. Like he would give me a thousand dollars for me to easily prove him wrong. That's like someone measuring your height. It doesn't change a lot. And so let's start talking about finances. This is the thing people have to understand. Stay the hell away from credit card debt. The way debt works, there's good debt and there's cheap debt and there's bad debt. Like um, 
like my mortgage is a fixed 30 year rate. And I, this is going to sound like uh, like Chinese for a bit, but I'm going to do my best to uh, to explain it. A lot of you will probably think that this is redundant, but this isn't about intelligence. These are skill sets. Like this is something that if you know, you will be more prosperous in your life. Um, so credit card debt is, is the worst thing you can do. If you're paying off your debt every month to like a Visa card or a MasterCard because of stuff you bought, that can be as high as 17%. And that's month after month after month. And if you can't pay all of it, uh, you, the next month, if, it, if the debt goes up, your, the amount you have to pay only goes up. So basically you're working for stuff. Like you're paying your material possessions. You're giving them a salary. Basically it's the opposite of what you want to do, which is investments and no investment is ever going to pay you 17%. If, if someone can guarantee you 17% bail, that's a Ponzi scheme. You know, you might be able to consistently get four to eight percent. You know, that's even a little high. Three to seven percent. Okay, credit card debt can be 17 percent. So you can't off balance that with other stuff. So that's what I'm trying to say is have credit cards to build your credit card score, but always get it back to zero uh, every month. Okay, you have to be able to budget. Budgeting is very, very important. So let's say, and it doesn't matter how much you make. There's, this is fractal, right? Uh, one year ago, let, let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick about how it's fractal. This was just in Breitbart, I think two days ago. It says blacklisted seven notable Twitter bands in 2018. So I'm like, hmm, that make the top seven? I better have. I was the first one to be permanently banned. Uh, I think in 2000, uh, of all the notables in this, like uh, Alex Jones and, and Gavin and stuff. And I did. And it says, um, libertarian comedian Owen Benjamin, who had over 120,000 followers, was banned from Twitter in April. And this quote, uh, both Twitter accounts suspended and now my ability to make an income has been revoked, declared Benjamin in a statement following the ban. This is disgusting. I have a two-year-old and a pregnant wife, and they just set my life back to zero with one big swoop. I just worked tirelessly for the five months building my online ability to make a living, and it's all gone. You will be next. Fight it now. Benjamin was often outspoken about his political beliefs, had an event canceled at the University of Connecticut in 2017 after he criticized the practice of giving hormone replacement treatment to children. Benjamin remains banned. Yeah, so that was financially devastating. And bear in mind, at the same time, they took away my ability to live stream on YouTube and upload videos on YouTube. And uh, they suspended my Facebook account. So I, I couldn't even, thanks to the bears, or else I couldn't have even gotten the word out that it happened, right? Because that's how they do it. And, and that's the definition of a conspiracy, by the way. How is Twitter, YouTube, Apple, Facebook all working together where someone gets banned all at the same day? It's called a conspiracy. That's what a conspiracy is. Alex Jones was called a conspiracy theorist, theorist and then they proved him right. By banning them off five platforms in one day. That's statistically impossible. And they do that so that you can't go on one of your other platforms and tell everybody where to find you. It just, it ices you. And so I uh, built, because like I had a college career um, touring colleges and they all canceled after I came out about the um, saying that um, the trans kids is child abuse and you can't give kids hormones blockers. Uh just hundreds of thousands of dollars just gone. And we were, I just bought a rental income house and it needed a roof. So I, I had to go on credit card debt at this point. I'm now doing, uh, I'm now doing a, a manual labor for my brother for $20 an hour dragging brush because, you know, I was a touring comic. Like I would do uh, weekends at clubs, like all this stuff. I'm still not allowed to do colleges or clubs or anything, right? I'm not even allowed to book my own theaters. They, they still have me banned. Guess what? I'm doing better now, if you think about it. Like, I don't have to cut in agents, managers, lawyers, all that shit. And I have consistent income now. But my point is, when I went back to zero, I just applied all the same principles to get out of zero. And I'll tell you. And it wasn't zero, zero. 
That's why I like to give people a couple hundred bucks if they're truly at zero because zero is really hard to get out of. Having a thousand dollars is is plenty to get out of any hole. But zero in debt, debt is the worst. Zero is doable, but like, okay, so what you do is you budget out how much you can make a month and then look at all your um, expenses. We'll start with rent, right? Like let's say you make a thousand dollars a month and look right down, you, you got rent, uh, let's say your rent's 200 bucks. We're just making this simple. I know this is insanely low. Your car payment is 300 bucks. Um, your food, 200 bucks. Going out, it's 500 bucks, et cetera, right? You got to get it under a thousand and then give yourself 10% to save. So if you make a thousand a month, all your expenses, all of them have to total no more than $900. So that means you might have to literally uh, trade in your car for the cheapest car. No more going to bars. That's why I would sell, uh, I would sell flasks at my shows because it's one of the only uh, merch items that actually saves you money. If you want to go to a bar with your friends, bring your own liquor in a flask. And I know some of you bar owners right now are like, hey, fuck you, Big Bear. No, it's fine. It's fine. No one cares about that. That's not a big deal. The markup on alcohol at a, at a, at a bar is absolutely insane. You know, I think heroin is less. Uh, and then, you know, you don't need fancy shit. No name brands. Never buy new clothes again. Uh, and then once you start saving money, like make sure you pay off your credit card debt. Student loan debt is low it is cheap debt because a lot of it's only three, four percent. Uh, but credit card debt pay off immediately, right? And so depending on what you do, like if you work for an, a company and you don't, you're not your own corporation, um, just keep your shit to a minimum and then save 10% every month because what you want, this is the dream and this is what I've actually started to accomplish is you have your money work for you. So let's say you have hundred thousand dollars and you can make four percent consistently on that that's four thousand dollars a year right every year and and you lose nothing off the principal so the principal is the amount of money you have without a hundred thousand dollars and if you make four percent that's four thousand dollars a year now now you can start understanding the mega rich because if that's a million that's forty thousand that's ten million that's four hundred thousand a year off four percent you can give your money pays you, right? And that's 4%. That's nothing crazy. It's the same with uh, owning businesses or real estate. But if you're like just trying to get out of debt, don't even think about any of that stuff. What, like when I lived in LA, I, I shared one room with two other guys at one point, three other guys. I drove a 1991 Plymouth Acclaim with an orange fender that um, when I finally donated to the Kidney Foundation, they said it was worth a dollar. Okay, I, uh, I worked in a restaurant, so I would eat, I would literally eat food off people's plates. Why would I do all this? Because I needed time. If I had had stuff, if I had had an expensive car or like, uh, you know, went out to eat all the time or any of that stuff, I, I wouldn't have the time to do stand up. And I saw that happen over and over again to entertainers in, in Hollywood. They go out there, they'd want that bling, and then they'd find themselves working all these shifts, double shifts at the restaurant every day, and they wouldn't have time to go to the improv or shoot a sketch, right? So the way I structured the currencies is I kept my expenses so crazy low that I just had to work to pay that. And then the rest, you know, the free time wasn't spent playing video games or, you know, doing what people do or whatever. It was to allow myself to do comedy because I didn't, I didn't get paid as a comedian for years, you know? And then even when I was on the show Punked, when I was like 24, uh, I got $300 an episode and it would be all day. Like imagine if I, I couldn't do the audition and then there's a callback. And then when you, you, you calculate all the time you put in um, to just getting that rate, you're making less than minimum wage. And that would happen all the time for people. You know, you'd land a commercial where you make 10 grand, but you had to audition 50 times to get that. And if you think about driving and all that stuff, but anyway, so my whole thing was my currency was time to do comedy. You know, if I had to be at the restaurant every night, 
to, um, to pay off debt or to buy stuff, I wouldn't have been able to be a comedian. So that's when you have to start thinking about currencies, right? Like one, a major currency is health. Like think about your job. If you have to sit 80 hours a week and it's, and you have like an Audi when you could easily have a nine, a 2003 Toyota, you'll lose years of your life from that. You know, self-respect is one. That's why that Google employee gave me a grand because that was, I, I totally understood where he was coming from. He had to feel better. He had to feel like he wasn't a total pussy where he's like, okay, because that, that's how war is fought. Like there's supply lines to the front of the line, right? Remember that that movie, uh, that movie, uh, it just came out about, about the, like the civilian fleet of ships uh, in the English Channel that, that got all the lads back. It was directed by Christopher Nolan. Does anyone know what that is? This is some good content. I'm, I'm glad you like it, Tom. I think this is something that uh, the people really need to understand because it will free you. Oh, Dunkirk. Yeah. I have no idea why I'm talking about Dunkirk. What the hell was I talking about with Dunkirk? Oh, right. Okay. So you have these like old dudes that are patriots and they're not uh, a fighting age or let's say someone um, was too slow or they're missing an eye. Like my uncle got discharged from the Navy because he was missing some toes. Legend. <clears throat> like my, um, my grandfather didn't have enough fingers. And so he would, he would mine the lead that went into bullets. But uh, the currency that they provided was picking up the guys uh, that were stranded on the beach. And they're just as much of the war effort as anyone else. Like, I actually get to say the things that need to be said in society. And I take the, uh, the, the, the beatings for it. And there's people with jobs and they make tons of cash, but they can't say shit. So to resolve that issue with their morality they help supply the front lines. And that makes total sense, right? But those are people with a disposable income. And we'll get to that in a second. Okay. So that is the most fundamental thing is get yourself to a position where you're not spending more each month than you take in. And you may have to cut out some serious stuff. And if you've got a girlfriend um, that, that isn't cool with that, where it's like, but baby, I want to go out to dinner. That's a deal breaker because that's someone who doesn't see the big picture where you say, listen, sweetheart, I can make you, I can make you the best meal you've ever had here. And then we can go on a date on a hike and then we can make love under a waterfall. Isn't that better than, than a club? And they'd be like, but baby, I want to look pretty in front of all the girls out. So don't be distracted by stuff like that because none of those currencies are worth it. Those, those people in your life, like when I went back to zero with Amy, Amy was pregnant with Charlie. We have a little kid. We just moved across the country. And that's why Amy and me are so good. And she's such a legend is she was proud of me. She was proud of me for standing up for kids. And she said that she wanted our children to be the man that I was being, you know, and Amy loves fancy shit. All women do all women. They're like birds. They like shiny pebbles. They're kind of retarded in that sense. But guys are like that with like throwing rocks at shit. You know, like me and my buddy are slaughtering a pig tomorrow. I've never done that, by the way. I'm a little nervous, but I feel like it's the least I can do because I eat pork. I have to be a part of it. So that's the most important thing. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is taxes. Let's say you're your own corporation. And this is why you have to think about uh, buying a house versus renting. Right now, it's really hard to buy a house really hard. And that's one reason why I was so angry at Jordan Peterson when he would charge $300 to shake his, his damp hand because he knows full well who his audience is, just like I know who a lot of my audience is. is. They're young men who want a family and they want to be able to buy that starter home and they want to do good, right? And he would charge 300 bucks. That's total. That's such a dick move. And these people want to do good and they want to be men and they want to try hard and they want to give respect to their their alpha and so they would do that and that's manipulative that's why i only charge 20 bucks even though sometimes that it sells out quick and, and it brings in uh some people that every now and then you know act insane but that's fine so anyway it's so hard to buy a house right now don't feel like a failure or 
that you're not part of the American dream because you can't afford a house. Um, it's so expensive to buy a house, and that's for a variety of reasons. Uh, foreign money, all kinds of shit, scams. Uh, so don't feel bad about that at all. Because like my parents' house, when they bought it, was was like 10 grand, 15 grand. Right now it's worth about 80, maybe. My condo in LA was like $650,000. And I bought it for the reason I'm about to tell you guys. But that was a thousand square feet, like in a neighborhood where people shit on the street and butt fuck and get shot. And the cops have like little rainbows on their cars and don't give a shit about you. But when you're self-employed, let's say you own your own business or like uh, you have your own corporation where you pay yourself. Um, and this is what Donald Trump has been accused of not paying his taxes and shit. And his point is totally valid. He's like, no, I'm going to go with the laws that you idiots make. And so when you buy a home, if you have an income that's relatively high at the time and you know, they'll take all your fucking tax, all your money. If you don't figure out how to write shit off a mortgage, you can write off the interest. And hopefully while that's happening, the, the, the property itself is going up in value, but the whole game is to get your income as low as possible for the government to tax. Always pay your taxes. You'll go to jail if you don't pay your taxes. That's not something to mess around with. The game, the real art is write-offs. And, uh, you know, don't, don't pull a scam at all, but, but see every place that you can write off. Like for example, if you own a property, the interest on the mortgage, you take directly off your income. So let's say you, you gross a hundred thousand dollars a year. And, um, and if you pay tax on that in the state of California, you'd have to pay $60,000 because you're in one of the highest income categories. You probably pay like 40 and then, and then state is like 11. And then, you know, to pay Bernie Sanders is putting pop fetish. Literally they'll take more than you bring home. And then the, the sales tax, everything, it's insane. So what you do is you figure out how much you can lower your income. So you buy a place and then the, the interest is a write off. And if that doesn't help you just rent, like there really is a thing where you don't necessarily know what's better between renting and buying. Like buying was always the right move um, for the most of uh, the history of America. But right now, if you're looking at like a fall down house, it's like three, $300,000 in a, in a, you know, a suburb of a, not that big of a city, which is what people are experiencing like crazy right now. Renting isn't a failure at all. You know, you got to just make sure you don't overspend because you don't want to get in a predatory loan situation either. You don't want to get an adjustable rate or subprime rate. I'll get to that in a second. But so then like gasoline to gigs is a write-off for me. This piano is a write-off, you know, like the computers are write off. So let's say I spend $10,000 on computers and piano. So now I only made 90. Now let's say um, the, the interest on my mortgage was $10,000. Now I only made 80. Now let's say I, all the airfare. Now let's say I fly in Nimmer and Coddington and stuff on, on, for the tour and Brandon and maybe DeLev comes in from Israel, which is a decent ticket. Um, that all comes off my gross. So that's why it, it's to spend money is good if it's for your business, because let's say it's five grand to have all those guys with me on the tour. Now I made 75. Now let's say um, I had to buy, you know, I had to hire security. Now I had to hire lighting. I can get that shit down to 20, right? And that's not illegal. So now you have to pay like almost no taxes because, and by the way, I can't get there these days, which is a blessing. But there would be years where I would, I would pay so like my, t I would get my net low and it's not a scam. That's real. If you have an expense that goes with your business, the, the federal government doesn't make you pay tax on that because it's wildly unfair. Like if you're a farmer and you have to buy seeds to make money, that's an expense that comes off your gross. And that's how you beat the taxes. 
because you can't avoid paying tax on any income. They'll sniff it out, the IRS or bloodhounds, and they will put you in fucking prison. But write-offs is a very, very interesting skill. And I highly recommend you hire a Jew to do it for you because there's so much, um, There's the book is like that thick to know all this shit. The tax law is a whole thing. So now let's get to uh, whether or not you should go to college. Uh, I tend to say no because it's about return on investment. So back in in like the 70s, if you want to, if you got a degree, uh, like a high school um, degree, you make 20, a college degree, you make 30, and then from there it grows, right? So you can start quantifying how much a degree is worth based on how much more you'd make, based on the four years that you took to go to college. If you crunch the numbers these days, the only reason to go to college would be for engineering, you know, petroleum, geology, um, like uh, agriculture, actually, if you want to, I don't know much about that, but that seems like you learn stuff. Trade school is very important. You want to learn how to weld, be a plumber, carpentry, stuff like that. It's all about return on investment. Because if you go get a college degree right now from a mid-level like state school in like history, it's a terrible idea. And I'm not being judgy because that's exactly what I did. I had a degree in history. And back then it wasn't as bad to do that. And I'm glad I went to college. I, um, I learned a lot. I was the first time away from home and all that stuff. But there's no return on that. All it does is put you in debt and bigger and bigger and bigger debt. And it's the only debt that you can't uh, declare bankruptcy on. Like you could buy an airplane with a Discover card and declare bankruptcy, which is not good. You don't want to do that. But it'll wipe your debt clean. You can't declare bankruptcy on student debt. And so any liberal arts degree is, is literally a chain around your neck. Because now you have to take that stupid job just to pay for your health insurance. Now you have to, every month you have to pay, pay it off. Uh, you get no value from it. You lost four of your most produ productive years. And you're more likely to vote for the left. It's a leftist scam. Because when you're in debt, when you're uh, feeling like you're suffocating, uh, you're going to vote in big government protection. People, that's why women usually go towards safety and men go towards freedom. Uh, women go towards freedom when they have a, when their moms and their husbands make cash and they like want lower, they want their husbands to, to work hard. Uh, and men will go towards safety when they're in debt and they have no, um, they have no hope for their future. Hey, Georgie, it's all, it's all good. So this is by design. There's a reason I'm taking the time to try and explain this to you guys because um, they want you looking for safety. The scam, the ultimate wizard move is the, uh, is the expansion of, of government. So they want you to be in a position where you can't afford healthcare unless you have a job. The job pays 30 grand a year. You're in $60,000 in debt and there's no way out. Georgie, I'm going to call Amy to bring in George. Hang on a second. Um, and this is why, this is why I, uh, one second. Can you grab George? This is why I, like every special I sell, I give Coddington a dollar because he, uh, directs and edits them and he, and he goes through the headache of doing all that. And so if I sell five, it only costs me $5. If I sell a thousand, he makes a thousand dollars. And so that is the type of relationship you want to develop with people that are um, that are starting off in, in very high risk, high reward, artistic type uh, ventures, because that way, let's say I, I paid Coddington a thousand dollars to direct a special, and I only sell a hundred. I now made way less than Coddington did. That's the beauty of um, a percentage of gross because that's how I, I want the world to be. I want the world to benefit from each other's benefit. Like when your tribe benefits, I want everyone to benefit. When I benefit, I want my people to, in a fractal ratio type situation, benefit as much as, or as little as I do. That's the dream. And that way, you're never put in the hole. Like my tours, I don't make much money on because I get to have 
people. And I need people with me, especially with uh, security threats, isolation. It helps me write. I feel, um, you know, it helps with depression. It's awesome. And then I can write because I, I because I have to I have to rent out the the spaces now. You know, like three thousand dollars to rent like um, a children's museum because no theater allowed me to play because I've been blackballed, right? But that's okay. This is why ingenuity is so important. So then I get to do the tour. I get to have my people. I get to shoot it properly, and then I can profit the rest of my life by selling the specials. And even if it's a couple hundred bucks a month. You do five specials, that's now money for life. And it just keeps coming in. It's not like, like I have been a wage earner. And um, you have to do one hour is 20 bucks. And there's a place for that. And there's a, I may be going back to that if I ever go back to uh, zero again, or like I, I, I'm not allowed on the internet or I, I get put in jail or something, you know? But when you're selling your time, it's not as efficient as if you can have something make money for you. And that's when uh, owning businesses, owning real estate, being a rent collector, those things make it so you can just live. Now, there's ex exploitative ways of doing that and there's beneficial ways of doing that. That's why I was always pro loans, pro banks, pro stuff like that because I didn't realize it, at some points in my life just how predatory these people can get and just how much they can destroy humans' lives who, who aren't privy to this information. Because let's say I have an idea for a business, I have $5,000. I go to a Jew and I say, Jew, I need $95,000. And he goes, listen, you pay me 4% on that, I believe in your idea, win-win. Now in five years, I'm, I'm worth 1.5 million. The Jew made money, I made money, the loans paid back. That's how capitalism works, that's how growth happens. Now. What happens with this disgusting, demonic uh, relationship with the banks and the government is when things get bad. A lot of it isn't even the bank's fault necessarily. It's more the government, and I'll explain. So I think it was the 90s or early 2000s, probably the 90s. It was definitely a liberal, one of these idiots. It was probably Clinton. I might be wrong, but I'll look it up. I guarantee it was Clinton. These like people-pleasing wizard idiots who just want to say anything they can to make people happy enough that they don't care that they're banging 20 year olds in the oval office right so he's like he's like i think everybody should have a house poor or rich there's a reason some people don't have houses they don't have enough money and they don't understand how to uh deal with money and this isn't a racial divide this isn't it's purely a skill just like i can't do plumbing i can't make shit I couldn't even build a fucking ramp for my kids' monster trucks. There's a skill to money. And some people will foreclose on their house, right? But they'll pass these laws to get fake votes in retard states like California. And so they did something called subprime interest rates. And this was policy before it was a bank thing. Now, this is when the banks get stuck. If one bank doesn't go with it, another will, and they now have uh, a competitive disadvantage and they would go out of business. That's why the merger, this crony capitalism is so bad because it's a race to the bottom morally. Like no big bank can pump the moral brakes because if anyone is willing to do this shit, they will go out of business because the, the competition will overtake them. This is the problem. This is predatory lending. So they jazz people up with wizardry, you know, like a stripper, like a, you know, just some idiot like who lives in his, his mom's basement. He's like, I'm finally ready to get out of my mom's basement and I got baseball cards and I can, you know, I deserve a house too. And he's not, he's probably not a bad guy. But so these banks will give subprime interest rates. And so it doesn't have a fixed interest rate. It can be whatever the interest rate is. And when people don't understand how interest rates work or debt or mortgages or any of this, they just see it as free money. So let's say he gets a house for $100,000, he puts zero down, and the bank gives him $100,000 because of government policy bullshit, right? Two years later, he can't, a $100,000 mortgage would be $600 a month mortgage, roughly, on 3.5%. 
let's say the bank jacks it to 8% because of the way the market's going. So now it's 1200 a month instead of 600 like that, right? So now he can't pay it. Guess what he does? He bails. Why? Because he didn't put any down. There's a reason you have to put 10% or 20% down. It's stakes in the game. There's a reason people with children and homes are conservatives. They have stakes. They can't just burn everything down because they have blood and land and stuff that can be taken from them. When the population, they, you know, this is why I like helping people. I don't want people that are broke and desperate because those people are dangerous. When people have nothing to lose, they got nothing to lose. So that dude can bail. That's now a foreclosed house, right? The neighbor had the same deal. And he's like, yeah, I can't pay this either. Bail, right? That's a domino effect. Now the people that actually put in the 20% for the, uh, uh, the $100,000 home, their home's worth $80,000. Now it's worth $60,000. Now it's worth $50,000. They put in twenty. dollars uh, Their debt is now greater than the money they put in. That's called being upside down. That means that you have no value in your home anymore because it's worth less than what you owe. That's a terrifying place to be. And that happened to a lot of honest homeowners because of the subprime interest rate. So this started a cascade of people um, getting out and, and they realized that these mortgages were bundled and it wasn't even one bank who owned the debt and it was just all over the place. And it was all because of liberal government policies, which is just mind blowing. And still that type of stuff, the type of stuff where you, you know, you, you usury is a problem. It really is. I see it. It's one thing if you can time travel. That's why um, communities like Jews and Koreans and Armenians can develop such wealth because they give each other loans in their community. I don't see, I don't consider that usury. Like, that's how you time travel. That's how you get a young buck with an idea and some, and some hard work. And one person wants their money to, to work for them and get 3 4% on it. They trust that this dude's going to do a good job. That person can buy something he wouldn't have been able to afford and then grow into it. That, that to me is great. But that's not what we're seeing anymore. We're seeing adjustable rate mortgages. They're called ARMS, right? And, and they qualify more people than fixed mortgages. And they'll, and they'll allow you to put zero down, but just know that your bills, you can't budget when it's adjustable. Like, let's say you, you budgeted $600 a month for mortgage and you make a thousand and you figured it out and you can save 10% a month or whatever. Now it goes to 2000 a month. What do you do? Do you, do you, do you take out credit card debt? to pay that debt, now that's at 17%. Before you know it, you're bailing on your house, you're um, bailing on your credit cards, your, your credit card goes to zero, right? Now you can't even rent a, you can't even lease a car. How do you get to work? See, that is where they want you. That is where these people, it, it's not, it's by design that we can name the Nina Pinna Santa Maria, the fucking boats that Columbus took here. Who cares? They never taught us how to balance a checkbook. My freedom, my prosperity, the fact that I'm could have been a homeless artist. Like I am wacky, guys. I take risks. I speak truth to dangerous people. I'm in a career that 99.99% of people fail at, right? Like the reason that I survived was my community, my family, and my financial sense because at no point was I making it rain. Like I knew people, I knew uh, celebrities that would make so much more money than me, like way 